EC, my name is Taylor Campbell. Welcome back to Lion Talk. This is episode four, and today we have our bowling coach, Joey Kendrick. Thanks for being here. We're excited to learn a little bit about bowling. So just tell us a little bit about your background with the manual and your background with bowling. Uh, background with the manual and bowling. Well, I've been involved in bowling. I uh, started bowling, I guess, later in high school years. Uh, I was in a, grew up in a small town. We didn't have a bowling center. And, then one day they got one, so I got involved in it. Uh, so I, I never was involved much in high school bowling or youth bowling, just pretty much straight into adult bowling. Uh, but I got involved in the bowling business in the industry of bowling in 2002 when uh, I answered a call to the YMCA in our hometown who actually had a bowling center. And they had called me about coming to work there full time, and that's kind of where I got introduced into college bowling. And uh, little did I know that years later, 18 years later, I'd be here at Emmanuel College, and I've now been a collegiate coach since 2004. Wow. So, so you mentioned you're from a small town. They didn't have a bowling center. Where is that small but, town? Uh, I'm originally from Babers, Georgia. Okay. Uh, I guess most known for another famous football coach in the state. Uh, but uh, they, we had a, they opened up a small bowling center. I I went a couple times before because we were close to Tallahassee, Florida, uh, with the church, and always enjoyed it. And then when our town finally opened a bowling center, I was one of the first ones there, and uh, it closed after probably seven or eight years. But it was something I kind of stuck with, and you know, would still travel. It's something I actually was good at, mm -hmm. and uh, I didn't want to give up on it. And they eventually, uh, a family donated money to the YMCA to build a bowling center. And the YMCA was calling me. I was working for a, another company. I'd been there for nine years at the time, and was kind of enjoying a, a good career there in sales and distribution. And, uh, the YMCA kept calling and it gave me the opportunity to go back to school and uh, complete my degree and get involved in coaching, which is what I always wanted to do. That's awesome. Well, Just never thought it'd be bowling. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, speaking of that, how did you get involved with bowling here at Emanuel? What initially led you to Emanuel? Uh, a phone call. <laughs> uh, I was a bowling coach at uh, Florida State University. I coached the women's team. I was assistant coach uh, for the program. I was. Uh, assigned to the women's program and I had been there I spent 10 seasons there and that was kind of a unforeseen uh, opportunity there uh, the director of the program passed away as my, my wife was going there for grad school to bowl and right before uh, like two weeks before classes started uh, she was informed that the coach had passed away unexpectedly and uh, as they were getting into the season they still didn't have a coach and I made the mistake of sending an email saying, hey, is there anything I can do to help? And they said, hey, great, we didn't know you wanted to help coach. And I'm like, I know nothing about college bowling. This was, <laughs> this was in 2004. And uh, they go, well, we just kind of need somebody. They know what to do, just kind of be more of a chaperone. And, and of course, I can't do that. I got more involved and uh, was able to meet some great people who were involved in coaching, who have been, their, their jobs and career have been college bowling. Mm -hmm. And they... I got some of the first tournaments, and I was like, wow, I never knew that bowling was that big in, in some states and in some locations and areas in the country. And it's and now it's one of the fastest growing uh, high school sports in the nation. Wow. So. Hey, that's, that's a really interesting fact. I didn't know that bowling was that popular either. So that's yeah. something that you see can learn from bowling here at Emanuel. So with this year, with all of the crazy that's happening with COVID-19, this new season that's kind of looking a little different, what are your expectations going into it? Well, it's, it's a lot different. This, uh, like I said, my first year coaching in college was 2004, and I never envisioned something like this happening. In yeah. fact, when it, we, uh, we were on a plane getting ready for our first round of the postseason, as soon as we pulled away from the gate at Charlotte Airport, I got the message that our uh, postseason had been postponed and eventually canceled. Mm -hmm. So we couldn't get off the plane. We flew to Philadelphia, got off the plane, got our stuff, and we got back on another flight and came back, flew back to Charlotte, drove back to Emmanuel that night. And uh, then a month later we find out, yeah, our season's done, it's over. Yeah. And it was, it was hard. We had uh, our men's team that just made their first trip to national championships the year before. They were ranked 20th or 21st in the nation, had the expectations that we were going back. The girls who had, first two years I was here with the national championships and we had rebuilt the program and they were ranked top 16 in the country and 
they had, we had expectations that both teams were going. And instead, uh, the three senior ladies, you know, didn't get to finish their season. And uh, it was hard. And, you know, we're starting back and right before classes started, we got hit that, well, our, our normal season is going to be basically cut in half this year. Uh, instead of starting tournaments in October, we're not starting until January. And, uh, our postseason, uh, if we do make it to the national championships, it's the same week as graduation. So it's, it's going to be some obstacles. Yeah. Uh, you know, our ambition is that both teams will be at national championships. And, uh, and as, as I told my seniors, you know, it's, you know we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. If you want to stay and graduate, I support that. If you want to compete for the national championship, the, the thing that you, you've earned the spot for, by all means, I'll be there to support you for that as well. So. How are you feeling about the team this season, having your recruiting process interrupted and just kind of everything flipped over going you know, into this was, season? The recruiting was, wasn't interrupted, it was pretty much cut off. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, we, we do, we were able to get several young men and women in the program. We're very excited for them. Uh, we graduated three seniors. Our, our women's team, our numbers are, are not what they usually are, but what we have is a, is a very good, very competitive team. Uh, we return basically uh, four of our starters from last year's team that did very well. Uh, and our men's team, it's uh, uh, the whole varsity team's back. You know, uh, when they, when this, that group of young men went to the Nationals, well, two, two seasons ago, they were all freshmen and sophomores. And, you know, last year and this year were supposed to be the years that they were really supposed to be the national contenders. So it's, you know, it's, it's only up this year. <laughs> so. So uh, instead of having two years to, to do it, it's cut back to one. Uh, we were able, fortunately, to bring in some, some new guys who were very promising and uh, had some very, very great uh, youth careers in bowling and a lot of great accomplishments as well as the young ladies that are coming. Well, so. we look forward to you making it to the Nationals this year. Explain a little bit about how scoring in, in bowling works and just how you even make it to those championships. Well, a uh, typical season, uh, the way the score is set up is what they call the power rankings, power points set up through uh, United States Bowling Congress Collegiate, USBC Collegiate. And you are, ideally you want to bowl of, of ten, 10 events, and the tournaments are positioned as tier one and tier twos. Tier ones are majors, there's limited ones throughout the country, different locations, uh, about one or two a month. And you try to bowl four to five of those events, and you know, five or six, Tier twos, which are more your smaller regional events. Uh, this year, there's no no difference between tier one, tier twos. It's just tier twos. Uh, and instead of bowling ten events, uh, your target is to bowl six events. So it's uh, mostly going to be smaller tournaments. Uh, a smaller tournament being there could be you know a minimum of four schools and as many as thirty schools there. Uh, some of the tier ones that we attend last year, there would be. Uh, 80 schools at some of those events. Wow. Uh, competitions will start at 7 in the morning for the guys, and I'm there till 12, 30, 1 o'clock in the morning with girls finishing up. So, uh, you know, we won't have those events this year, but they're going to be small, smaller uh, regional events. Uh, and then the postseason uh, will be based off of the power rankings. It's similar to, to basketball and collegiate baseball as the top 64 teams go to four different regional or sectional sites. Mm -hmm. And uh, from those sites, four teams advance. So the top four finishers from the weekend on the men's side and women's side advance to the national championships, which is the final 16 uh, for the men and final 16 for the women. Uh -huh. uh, and the, the scoring process, it's, uh, that's, that's how we get our points. Uh, Postseason is basically in, in bowling, it's, it's what they call the Baker format, where five person teams uh, can consist up to eight bowlers, uh, but they bowl different frames. So each bowler can, you know, bowls a maximum of two frames, and their score combines for the team score, and that's how our postseason works. Then we get to uh, the championships; it's just match play. All right. So one, you know, one games against, you know, you, you win a point, mm -hmm. and it's best of seven until you get to the finals. So. Wow. Well, thank you for sharing with us just a little bit about how bowling works, the whole recruiting process, and the scoring, and just all of the play. We really appreciate you being here. Is there anything else that you'd like the EC community to know about you, about bowling, about EC athletics in general? Well, just, you know, Emmanuel, is, I'm very grateful and thankful. Uh, I, I got to Emmanuel uh, 
you know, at, at a time when Emmanuel was going through some struggles. They had just started the program. They had had the team for one year, and uh, the personnel that was involved in bowling, they, they left. Right. And right as the season was over, kind of just turned everything in and left. And uh, I was given a phone call from a concerned parent saying, hey, our season's starting, we don't have a coach. Would you be interested? And I was like, who is this? <laughs> so, and uh, I started you know, doing some research from Emmanuel College. I, was, I, I really enjoyed the school I was at. I, you know, we had a very successful program there. And I came here and visited, and it uh, reminds me a lot of the, the small town I grew up in. And uh, my son was three years old at the time, and my wife and I were looking for a place to come and raise our family, and, and we just fell in love with the man been here ever since. Plan to be here as long as, long as we, we can be. Well, we look forward to a great season this season and many seasons to come. We hope that COVID just, you guys wipe it out and <laughs> still compete to the best that we all know that you're capable of and we look forward to really seeing a great season from you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you.